be doing a quick video here on some questions um and this is for uh one of the uh the youtube uh viewers um just want to let everyone know whoever's signing on to the subscriber list uh, I do pay attention to that and I do pay attention to uh, the comments or questions you guys have so I'm going to just start uh, taking my time to do a little bit more of the verbal videos that may be able to help you with your first animation and this is all part of what I was trying to do was um, which is going to be hard because I got to figure out what clips to cut out or leave in but what I'm going to try to do is put a, a whole package together from start to finish uh, meaning not just the animation the script part of it writing the script uh, the character creation and the development of the characters basically everything to pretty much do your first uh, animation or cartoon um, some of this stuff will be a little bit deep more detailed because it's going on a pro oh, am I allowed to uh, some stuff's gonna be going part of a uh, uh, short video uh, that I am working on I think I could say that but this is for Scream Gem 23. And this is going to be going out to uh, the YouTube clips. I have to build that up. I do apologize. Um, I'm building up the YouTube now so that whenever this, uh, this feature does come out, um, I'm going to put everything that I kind of did to create the feature on YouTube but um, they're telling me I have, to, I have to build up more of a uh, following on YouTube than any of the other uh, platforms so this is going to be specifically for Screen Gym uh, your question about uh, lighting so I'm going to take this here this clip right what I usually will do is I'm taking out a uh, overall uh, background screen if I need to change it I can do that by do, it's not it is a filter but it's not uh, I am using Inkscape Inkscape is a free uh, SVG tool that you can use uh, and I use it often um, sometimes what I'll do is I may be drawing in a uh, PNG format and PNG is basically like a, a basic uh, format for uh, you know you can use it to draw but what I usually do is I will uh, take the PNG and I'll open it up into uh, Inkscape and I'll, I'll, I'll mask it or color over it to get uh, a very clean uh, version of the the artwork. I don't know. Did I do any of that on here? Uh, I guess I can do this, right? So um, this is basically one of the things. So whenever I did create this little lamp here, um, I drew it in. <laughs> I drew it in paint. All the comments about me drawing in paint. I apologize. That's just what I started a long time ago. I'm so used to it and that's how I usually will draw or trace stuff out um, but I apologize to any artists out there that uh, <laughs> was looking down uh, at me for doing that so basically when, when you're when you have a, a vector image it's very clean um, you know the phase or the shadows or everything that you you do here looks a lot better um, than it would be in paint so that's what I primarily use it for 
um, but back to the video for how do I get different shading or colors so on the background part I use a uh, mask so let's go ahead and separate this first like so alright so whenever I want something to look darker um, I will create let's do a box here and let's make it visible that might help so let's create uh, let's get that popped up here and there we go alright so um let's see so let's go ahead and get this dark here so whenever you uh, the people that are asking about I think I put this in another video but this is going to be YouTube um, basically what I do is I will use the the paint bucket here to paste, basically fill in uh, a box and the reason why I do it that way is whenever you do make a a shape here you can't really modify it the same way it will only modify it like that um, I use this because then I can modify it with the points so I can change whatever I like on here this one when you just do a shape it doesn't allow you to kinda uh, do that with this it just gives you these these you know the rigid points and everything like that um, so basically when you when I do that think of it as like uh, clay dough and I'm just basically making a shape right so um, that's what I'll do it for for outlines uh, the reason why that's a good thing is whenever I come and I want to use this as a uh, like a mask first I will take it down like this so trying to find out how dark I want to get it right so technically black is this and what I'll do is here is I'll just change it like so right so and I kind of play around with it to see how dark I wanted to get um, but then what I'll do here is I will cut a space out to the things I kind of want to highlight right so I'll just do a little cut with the uh, the eraser here and whatever I want to highlight I'll just expand it like so right so if we know anything about uh, the way the light works uh, it'll usually give us a and this might be wrong but this is how I usually will see it uh, like expand it out like so right kinda like a triangle would be kinda like that right so um, that's what I'll do if I'm trying to get uh, you know a, a darker element to it and uh, the same thing with whatever you as far as uh, adding the glow um, once I do that let's take this glow out of the way so you can kind of see so basically this is just the lantern right above the door uh, this is not all meshed out this is going to be a scene where it's a, a distant scene um, but whatever I want to uh, wherever I want to cut alright so let's say for this example alright so that's what it looks like uh, when we do the mass though we have to cut a space out for it right like that and then you can kind of manipulate it however you like you know so if you think that this light here technically would be kinda of like that right you can cut all these nodes out it makes a lot because of my settings but you can set it up to where you don't get as many um, but I usually just cut those out like so and then I may have like six just to play around with you know six nodes to kind of uh, move around it's going slow because I got like a hundred of things in the background um, but basically um, so screen gem that's what I'll usually do the glow is just basically something you can add real quick in uh, Inkscape as well so if I take a little thing like this and I just wanna turn this blow high 
right? And then we can just bring it down or as, as you know light as we want it, right? So we can uh, change color on it, whatever you want to do as far as your, your pigmentation on it. Um, but that's, that's just a quick thing that I do for, uh, so basically you'll just create a square. You can technically do that with this too, but again, I think it, it, it's rigid. So I like the flexibility, um, whenever I do the, the paint fill and paint fill is just basically like this. Just take the paint, just fill it. And then you, you have this like a piece of clay. You can come in and kind of modify things like so. Whenever you do the close-up shot, it's a little bit different. Sometimes you want to have a glare or something like that. Um, that will be associated with it. Um, but that's basically what I'll do when I'm trying to do. Kind of do like that green. I might change that. And if you look at this one that I already like cut out, um, I wanted to have the moon be a little bit brighter uh, than anything else, right? So if you come in and then you start just kind of messing around with things where this balcony is, right? And you wanted to have that that same glow because of uh, the light from the window, you just do that. And again, like cut out all the, uh, the nodes that you don't need. Just do this here. And then whatever you want to angle it at. That's pretty much why I, I, um, I used the, the, uh, the paint bucket to kind of uh, make a new box where I can manipulate a lot more. Because you can go around edges really good, really close, right? So where we want those spots to be, and it is a vector, so it's going to be very, very, very clean uh, kind of looking thing here. Um, sometimes you could do this here. Uh, I usually will, if this is whatever color you want to make this, uh, as far as the, you know, the light, you can change that as well. It's whatever you like it to look like. Uh, since I like the way that green kind of looked. I may kind of keep that right so that's all so we got a cutout of you know using a, a dark colored mask over whatever image uh, you're using right we got put that mask on top and then do some quick uh, glow right like so just make it a little bit more transparent you can do this for fireflies as well. Some people do that, right? So there you go. And it is real quick, real simple. Um, kind of gets me. Um, this technically is for a scene. It's going to be here. And I've been added the, the cover here. Um, but same thing applies. Like, you know, all of these. Um, by the way, uh, if you look at these lanterns that are drawn. Um, this is a, a PNG image. So if you go back to when I created this in uh, the vector layers here, so you can see the difference of how clean it's. It's a, a lot cleaner look. So this is a PNG right here image, and then when I go and use Inkscape to trace over it. Um, all of these are uh, like vectors that are added and I just basically traced on top of it to get it to kind of whatever I want it to be uh, so that's and again as close as you want to get it looks really smooth right doesn't look like the quality compared to this is a lot different especially if you're doing um, an animation I would say more aligns of uh, professional animation this depends um, this the quality to look uh, when you do close-ups or anything you do and put this blend back and it bothers me um, when you do the close-up looks really good compared to 
uh, what a close-up like this would be and you could do this it doesn't matter on this particular scene for me because it's gonna be a distance shot where I got my little ship here kinda coming down um, and uh, this is Moho by the way anyone on YouTube um, that's the one I usually use I do have other uh, programs that I I use but Moho is the best for doing uh, animation for me I do have the character editor for Adobe uh, sometimes I do use that or if I want to do a more clean image um, you can kind of uh, use After Effects for that just depends on how much uh, you want to kind of play around with it so that is for Screen Gem uh, the next one this is also going to be on YouTube and this is going to be for the puppet tool and moving creating a PNG character and let me see if I can find the name uh, I think it was PPL that was asking me in the email um, so basically whenever you do a PNG uh, animation it's going to be different from creating a what they call a full character so let me see here so when you do a, uh, you see how clean these lines are compared to this PNG image see the difference basically uh, I would trace over this by using this to kind of fix that but we don't have to worry about it because we're just going to be doing movements on this one. Let's get rid of that here. So basically this is a scene where I'm, I'm trying to get the character to kind of be curious about the ship that's going to be landing here. There's a quiet version to this where I don't speak as well for this video so if you don't want to hear any uh, voices uh, I do show everything that I'm doing here on this particular one as well for the uh, the PNG animation one so basically the ship is going to be landing really slow there's going to be all kinds of glowing lights and things that are gonna that pop a little bit better in snow right and it's gonna land and this character here is going to be so everything in here is a uh, PNG so I only have what let's do a close up of this terrible quality PNG so I just have the you know what let's go from scratch here all right so I have the body I'm sorry that's the leg should label these it might help you uh, so I have this little body piece take this background out of the way all right so I have this body piece here and then I have Uh, this leg just like that all right got the other leg just like that and that's it so we have the body it has arms but I'm have to modify those but for what we're going to be doing this it'll be good enough for you to explain it to you so this leg so we only have three pieces right and this will help you if you're not trying to rig a whole character with basically um, what I call a totally rig character for this would be uh, you usually have a body you have like a uh, leg which is the top of the shin I'm um, sorry thigh and then the shin and then the shoe um, there's a lot of ways to do a custom rig depends on what you're doing but usually how I do it is I will have a thigh a leg and a shoe for both legs instead of being just all of this all together right 
uh, the body is pretty much similar for me. I'll have a, uh, a body, right, just like so, right? And then the head is in a group. So we have a head here, and we have the head, right? And we have a white background. So you can see that, right? So we have the head is just two. So group head white background and for this I'm going to add something else here just because we're playing around with it so let's go ahead and add another vector and let's make a oval Get that oval color to black. Why didn't that work? Uh, okay, there we go. All right, there we go. And let's have another one here. Just duplicate this like so. And you can label it. Just put I2 because this is just a short video. All right. So, and what I'll do is with these two here, we're going to put it in a group as well inside the head group. So, we'll just do another group. Put the eyes inside there. And we'll just put So I'm just going to label it I left and right, alright? So these are all together. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the this I, one of them in the right, both of them in the right space. Alright, so like so. Um, and what's cool about the Inkscape as well, this PNG image, once you trace over this in Inkscape, the quality is going to uh, dramatically change, but we don't worry about that now. So basically the head, right? So we have the head, all everything's combined in the head. You usually have eyebrows that should be separate, a lot of mouth, things like that, but this is going to be a distant scene. We don't have to, we don't have to super rig it with everything, right? You just gotta make sure this part here with these two eyeballs are behind the head. Right? And above the white piece that you have here. Right? So we have our, our eyeball uh, uh, eye left and right. And the head, make sure that's on top. And the head basically you're gonna do a regular drawing of your character and just cut out the eye sockets. And then we have the white background and then the eyeballs here, like so, right? So whenever we do move the eyeballs, you have an option. First of all, let's make sure we get our eyeball set up here, right? So basically set origin. We're going to put it right in the middle, like so. So now we got a closer origin, right? So, so this is the thing they do in that uh, <laughs> it's like uh, the claymation Christmas cartoons where they're they're confused <laughs> it's like whoever thought about hey I got a great idea let's do this for the eyes it'll make it seem so so that's basically it right so let's bring our body back in and again, um, don't worry about the arms because we're just doing it for uh, manipulation purposes. And I don't think I have bones in this one. So let's see. Uh, just get it out of the way. I think I have bones for this 
the one, right? Do I, please? Yes. I think I have bones for both of them, but I did the animation on this one. Alright, so basically... Move the snow out of the way. And I do a breakdown of how to uh, set your bones up. Get the spaceship going too. Alright. So. Alright. Let's just look at the. So for the, the leg. I use this, so it'll be one, two, three, four. So this bone, this bone, this bone, this bone. Is going to be that, right? So let's kind of play around with it here a little bit. So So, and again, this is far shot, so it doesn't have to be very detailed, right? But make sure you have all four of those, right? So, again, you'll have this one, this one, this one, this one for the left leg. And we'll do the same thing for this lake here. So, this lake, you're going to have one, two, three, four for the shoe. Alright, and let's kind of move this around here. And I do do a video on how to uh, stop these. Uh, if you want to make this a little bit more sturdy instead of like bendy like uh, I do have a video for that as well um, but basically so that's all we really gonna need for that right so we got our both legs so let's go to the body here kind of look at that all right so the body I'm gonna have I add have this one, two, three, four, and then five. So let's bring in the body here. All right. So it'll be this one, this one, this one here as well, and then this big one here. Stop kind of at the neck part here, All right? And then and lastly, for the head, oh, I lost my head. Then for the head, oh, I know why it's doing that because I move those images, uh, but they're still showing up, which is kind of weird. So uh, for the head, you'll have this one here, this one like so. So we have the head there. Now there's two parts with the head that I use. And let me show you that now here. So even with the head selected here, right, with these two, you can manipulate it the other way around, right? Just 
regularly like so so usually when I'm doing this I will use this as the movement for you know up down things like that you just gotta make sure that your 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 anchor point is here where you want the head to kind of bend right like so and then if I want to go and mess around with the bones I have the ability to do that right as well so let's put all of these back together like so and there we go so all the everything we need to do is force the movement right You can do this different. Uh, the reason why I have this bone transition, like by the neck part, is because um, sometimes if I want to make this smaller, I'll, I can manipulate or stretch it in a way um, without it looking too weird, right? Because this is pretty much this angle here uh, is pretty much the same thing. If I went and just use the the oops, missed that up, undo. Uh, the box pretty much the same thing if I do this and I want to come back and uh, stretch uh, anything with the bones I can do that like this leaning in and this is what I use to kind of manipulate if I'm like if it's changing expression because you can bring this you know down up things of that nature so this is kind of gummy like that um, and this part where you use this kind of gummy thing uh, if you think about manipulating the jaw right to where it may be the characters chewing on something you can use this stretchy morph like this around this mouth part um, so it, it gives you the ability to do that so when you do stretch um, and I have to make an anchor point there but when you would stretch if you just want to stretch the mouth wherever you want to do that you can um, use that in that way um, but that's basically it on that one and again this is a, a just a distant scene so it's not really warranted for like a close-up like that um, but that's how I uh, usually will do that so, uh, snow spaceship when you do your close-up if you want to use it as a close-up you can so basically this character is trying to check out who is in this ship all right so um, I use that manipulation it's like who's in there what who is that I don't recognize this ship huh who's in there eyebrows would go up all right I'm like who is this um, but that's how I did the manipulation on this one because when you're using that sponge look it's not too robotic when you're doing your uh, your animating you know what I mean let's pull this back uh, to hide your bones it's this here this toggle and where it says show curve, you just click that or it'll erase the bones if you if that gets annoying to you. Um, but that's how I manipulate it because it's more of a, a softy kind of you know stretchy kind of look where he's leaning in. And um, you know, you can use that kind of you don't want to do any kind of manipulation like that too crazy. You don't want it to look like, you know, 
a sponge kind of thing but if you're just trying to get the the overall like bending in kind of thing instead of that more robotic look you can use this method it, it tra I think it translates a lot better that way as far as like I'm trying to um, genuinely have curiosity in the movement right I'm like what the hell who is this right you can use that it's 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 a spongy kind of animation but it works on those subtleties um, that you want to uh, get across right so those are uh, two of the YouTube questions that got sent by the email uh, again I appreciate anyone who is joining the uh, subscriber list I have pressure on me to uh, build that up so I appreciate anyone who is subscribed um, we will have a form for a lot of the things that will be coming up um, the the form that we're trying to build is basically different animators coming together and doing sort of like a uh, showing like maybe at a theater and we're working on that uh, it is easy to do because um, the Microsoft a couple of different ways to show a, a um, movie without having to be in a theater um, but like we have the screens we have everything like that and what we want to do is go uh, state to state kind of like a convention I guess you can say in a way um, but with all kind of animators there bringing in um, their short clip or film and kind of showcasing uh, each state that we, we do uh, go to we are working on that now uh, we do have some uh, happy news about people that are interested in doing this and as the platform and everything grows um, that's my ultimate goal so the global animation foundation is going to be pretty much that we will go and find artists um, we will be able to have screenings just like you would in a movie um, we're not charging, well, I don't know, movie tickets $24, uh, there will probably be, I would say, under $10 uh, to have these short clips, and then we'll be able to speak to the artist and the animators and, you know, everything like that. It's, think of it as a small showcase. Um, the bigger platforms, they really don't have a the ability to... Um, you know platform everyone so you know if we have these animators for in coming together in a way um, I think that'll be very beneficial for a lot of people that are just trying to get started and have ideas and and want to be able to uh, showcase um, their ideas as well so there is that I appreciate it again hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your for me I'm Florida so it's coming into evening or wherever you are in the world uh, thank you for watching the video